Pepper Pike, Ohio. If you're thinking about moving here or upsizing, this video is for you. We're gonna be going over some of the fun things to do, what it's like to live here, what houses are like, as well as a first quarter 2023 market update. What's going on in the market, inventory, housing, you name it, that is coming up in this video right now. Hey, it's Joel Gableman with Gable and Group and Real Brokerage. If this is your first time to living in Cleveland, Ohio, then welcome. I am sitting out here in Pepper Pike Park. It is cold, it's rainy. The things I do for my audience to give you guys feedback on what it's like to live here in Northeast Ohio. But if this is your first time in the channel, we cover all things, obviously, real estate, but we also focus on family activities, fun things to do, and we're focusing on families that need more space. That is our niche, so whether your kids are getting bigger, you're having more kids, or maybe your in-laws or parents are moving in with you, it was a call, text, email. We get calls from people all over the city, the state, the country, and sometimes outside of the country. Information is below as well as in the description, and we we'll look forward to helping you out and see what we can do to make your transition smooth and easy. Now, let's get into Pepper Pike, Ohio. I'm going to show you around Pepper Pike Park, as long as I don't get too cold in the middle of April, but let's go take a look. So we're going to speed through Pepper Pike Park so you can get an idea, but it's a really cute little park, nice, well-maintained, green. They sometimes have birthday parties out over here. There's a pickup drop-off book place. Nice to bring the kids to play, have some birthday parties here, right by Pepper Pike Police Department. But it's just a really nice place just to have in Pepper Pike. Pepper Pike is not a huge suburb, but to have a little park for people to go and relax and have a little outlet for kids to play. It's just a nice, safe, clean place to be. We are looking at Eaton Collection right now, one of my favorite, favorite bakeries and uh, stone oven. Let's go take a little walk and uh, see. Let's go take a look at some of the sights and sounds of Pepper Pike. Stone oven, oh, good stuff. Let's go see the bakery items at Stone Oven. Let's see if they still have my cherry scone. They have blueberry, cherry. Oh, my cherry scone's here still. I'm back in the car, but this cherry scone is pretty delicious, I have to say. For a reference point, here's a map of Pepper Pike. Boundaries are 91 or Sound Center. To the north is Cedar, 271 at Chicken Boulevard. We're adjacent to Hunting Valley, Orange, and Beachwood. Close access to 271. Orange schools, I'll put a link above to best schools in Northeast Ohio, which Orange was ranked. Overall, it's just a great community. Back at Eaton Collection, wanting you to have, I would say, boots on the ground, but more car on the ground. It's a little rainy. I think this is the next day and uh, wanted to show you guys a little bit more of the mall. So there's Kilgore and Trout clothing store to the left, Mitchell's Fish Market with a big fish in front, Paladar Land Kitchen. You got Pacific Ace for sushi, Stone Oven, of course, Taza, that's a Middle Eastern grill, Blue Mercury, Allen Edmonds, Fidelity. You got Kendra Scott, which I don't even know what kind of store that is. Tiffany Jewelry Store, Mabel's Barbecue, Chef Michael Simon's Barbecue Shop, Barnes & Noble. Yeah, Ethan Allen, Sir Top, Brooks Brothers, Anthropology, Orvis, the list goes on, Apple Store, North Face. This is just a more affluent neighborhood. And the reason why these nice stores are here is because that's where a lot of money is in Northeast Ohio. We're going to stay going quickly down Chagrin. Again, to the right is Pepper Pike, left is Woodmere. There's a pie shop, pizza shop, and the pizza's kind of average. Uh, maybe it'll get better by the time you check it out. To the right is the village. They've got a good fuzz shop. There's a flower shop. You're also going to see a new target that they put in there. Corky Lenny's Deli. They've got great corned beef pastrami, mishmash soup, matzo soup. Check that out. And we're very close to 271. Let's go take a look at some of the houses, though, in Pepper Pike. Right around the corner on Brainerd from uh, Eden Collection Chagrin is Sterling Lakes. You can get an idea of this little development. I won't say little, there's a fair amount of houses, but we're going to kind of blitz through just so you can get a feel of Sterling Lakes. There's some very nice homes. You can see the lots are small, maybe a quarter acre. This is, again, a newer development. So you can see developers are taking advantage of as much land as possible in Sterling Lakes. It's a great location, nice homes. You get a feel of the openness. I wish there were sidewalks. It is what it is. 
but it's still a very nice community in Pepper Pike. Let's go and see some of the older areas and get a flavor of the neighborhood. We're heading quickly down Chagrin Eastbound. To the right is Beach Mike Country Club for the golf lovers. And you're going to see to the left is a Cleveland Racquet Club. My family belonged there for many years. My dad was a huge tennis player. I think they've got 8 to 12 outdoor clay courts, which is really nice. Around the circle, you're going to see coming up Heinen's Grocery Store. It's a chain here of nicer grocery stores in Northeast Ohio, Peppermint Thai Food, a few other places. And to the right, there is Chase Bank, then Pat O'Brien's Wine and Whiskey Store. It's a, put a link to Best Cleveland Lover's Guide to Whiskey. Pat O'Brien's is great. Now the houses, we're going down, we're going to go down a couple streets, but I wanted to show you a few of the neighborhoods here. This, I believe, is Snowberry and Pepper Pike. Bigger lots. The homes are a little bit older. And then we're going to continue to see some more homes just so you can get a feel. This area here is um, a newer development. I might say newer, maybe in the last 20 years or so. But these homes are great. And again, it gives you a feel. Not all the homes are going to be multi million dollar homes. You'll see in the market report, median home price, average home price, I think is around 605 uh, to 650, depending on what data point you look at. But more importantly, you can get an idea of the, the feel, the vibe, the openness. We'll continue down here to see some of the other areas in Pepper Pike. That's a big shul to the left. We're going to be heading down. I want to show you guys a couple at least one of my favorite streets. There's obviously a bunch of them, but this is Heritage. You can get an idea of what some of the, and I say newer, I think these are in the last 10 years or so. So you get a flavor of um, from Sterling Lakes to Heritage. Now, full disclosure, these homes are more expensive because there's a lot more land. You can see these are much further spaced apart, but uh, you can get still a vibe of the Pepper Pike feel in the Pepper Pike neighborhood. These homes, full disclosure, are all seven figures. Plus, this is my favorite home on the street, just to my personal taste. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It reminds me of a home actually in Moreland Hills that is an adjacent suburb to Pepper Pike. Um, and we'll talk about that one later, but these homes are all absolutely stunning. You can see there's some new, a new build over there. Land is at a premium. There's just not a ton of development space. But these homes are absolutely stunning. We're going to jump in after this tour to a market update for first quarter. And let's just get into an idea of the overall market data of Pepper Pike, Ohio. But I hope you found this interesting and get a better taste of the neighborhood. We're going to fly through some quick analysis for the Pepper Pike market. This is a comparable market analysis. And we're going to be really looking at what is sold. This is specifically from first quarter, January through March, and Pepper Pike. And you can see that there were 11 homes that sold in first quarter from a low of 265 to a high of 1.1 million. This is an interesting stat. This is sold price relative to list price. So you can see the cheapest was 84%. So a house sold for about 84% of what it's listed for. Highest was over 100% around 97 percent on average and probably people look at this one a lot the price per square foot of what is sold here for first quarter it was around 180 dollars a square the most expensive price per square foot was 253 and the lowest was 106. now let's look at a few other metrics this is just in the last 30 days this is as of april 22nd might be from 21st not sure if they're counting today or not but from april 22nd i'm looking in the last 30 days everything that is sold and the results will tell me, I'm looking for what's called the absorption rate. The absorption rate tells you, frankly, if it's a buyer, seller, or neutral market. Rough rule of thumb is six months of inventory is neutral, less than six months of sellers, more than six months as buyers. And the way the calculation is derived, you take all active homes on market. In this case, there are 13. And you look in the last 30 days, what is sold? There have been five homes that are sold. And all you do is you just take those two numbers and divide it. So 13 active homes divided by five homes on average per month that have sold in Pepper Pike is a little more than two and a half months of inventory, meaning that there were no new homes active on market. It would take 
two and a half months approximately to sell through all homes. That is a very, very strong seller's market. A few other stats that I find uh, interesting. This is historical count of active homes. This is in Pepper Pike. This is going back to January 2018, and you can see a steady decline. And we know this. We know that there is not a lot of inventory, and home prices are reflecting that. Now, if the next step is also interesting, this is the current price relative to square footage. And again, you can see it's around 150 a square, but then because there is low inventory, this is creeping up higher and higher up until I believe we're around 240 a square foot in this time frame for 2023. And then if we go over to average days on market relative to list price, it's an interesting stat, but it's also fairly common sense. If we have from days to sell, the longer it is to sell, this here was, this is January 2022, Pepper Pike close to 130 days if the price is higher. So if the list price is higher, typically takes longer to sell. Obviously, it's not always the case, depending on the month and the inventory. If you have specific questions, if you're thinking about selling or you just want to get an idea of what your house is worth, we offer no cost, no obligation review of your home, as well as a simple valuation to determine if there's some easy and expensive updates, fixes, finishings that you can do on your house to maximize the value. Give us a call, text, email. We love helping people out. But this is the market feedback for first quarter 2023, as well as the current absorption of what's going on in the market, about 2.6 months of inventory remaining, a very strong seller's market for first quarter 2023.